Now in old school RuneScape, there are certain skills that conventionally take a fair bit of money to train, but today I'm going to show you some interesting methods that will allow you to actually profit while training skills that are normally quite expensive. Now let's start this off with probably one of my favorite methods I've been doing recently, and that would be creating sacred oil. Now this is a crafting, training, and money making method that can be done at level 20 crafting. The only other requirement is the Shades of Morton quest that has to be done to even participate in the minigame. Beyond that, if you do have the Mauritania Legs 3, this will help a lot in banking because otherwise getting back here can be a bit annoying, but it's not strictly required. Now creating sacred oil is actually quite profitable right now in particular due to the amount of people who are burning shade remains. I think they're doing this for like collection log purposes, but anyway, this method is actually quite simple. Your inventory is going to consist of a few different items. You'll want the flame tar bag, which is acquired from the Shades of Morton minigame. It's really easy to get. You simply just have to get a handful of the locks from burning remains, and it's a 1 in 2 drop from the chest, so you'll get it almost immediately. You'll want the flame tar hammer and the flame tar bracelet, both which can be bought directly from the GE, a tinderbox, and an inventory of olive oil. And also before you start, you want to make sure you fill up your flame tar bag with timber beams, limestone bricks, and a swamp paste. All of these are once again tradable. Now obviously the setup for the method is a bit time consuming, but once you have it all ready, the actual training method, dead simple. Now the first thing you want to do is make sure that you are in the Shades of Morton world, which is world 377. This will make things way easier, trust me. And from here, once you have your inventory set up, you're going to run over to the Shades of Morton minigame start area. It's dead simple, you literally just click reinforce the wall and you'll just start slowly adding materials to the wall. You only have to click once and your character will continue doing it for quite a while. And you'll notice every time you repair the wall, your sanctity percentage is going to go up. Now the way you make money with this method is by using the sanctity percentage to convert olive oil into sacred oil. But you're also going to be getting crafting experience along the way. Now the best way to do this is just to wait till you have above 90% sanctity and then just convert all of your olive oil at once. It should only take around a minute to get your sanctity up and this part of the method is incredibly AFK. So now that our sanctity is above 90%, we're going to start using the olive oil on the fire. This can be done pretty much as quickly as you want to click. Olive oil is worth about 60 GP, but sacred oil is worth 2.6k each. And you can convert an entire inventory in just a couple seconds as well. So there we go, we're done our first run and we can price check the inventory and it's worth 60k. So a very profitable money maker, which can earn right now around a mil per hour while also getting around 12 or 13k crafting experience on top of that. Not the quickest crafting training method, but if you start this right at level 20, you'll still be getting a lot of levels while making a significant amount of money. Now probably one of the best examples of a skill that's normally never profitable is Herblore. Pretty much every single training method for Herblore costs money and usually a significant amount at that, but there actually is one training method in the game that is actually very profitable, albeit pretty slow. Now that would be casting the Degrime spell. Degrime is a fairly new addition that was added back when the Arceus spellbook got reworked, so it is now part of the upgraded spellbook which means on top of requiring 70 magic, you also need the A Kingdom Divided quest to be completed. But if you're looking for profitable Herblore training, this is really the only way to go and it's definitely worth unlocking. Degrime can be cast on any regular unclean herb and it will instantly clean a full inventory of them in one spell cast. This means that you can clean upwards of 16,000 herbs per hour, which is one of its main drawbacks. It's kind of expensive to buy all those herbs and you can only do it for around half an hour before you hit the buying limit, but you probably won't want to do this after half an hour anyway, so that's no big deal. Currently, the most profitable herb to clean is Cadentines, but that will change on the daily. So you want to make sure you check the margin of the grimy versus the clean herb and find whatever is the most profitable and the highest level. Higher level herbs are recommended because they provide higher experience. Uh, so right now we're testing this out on Quorum and at peak efficiency you can get up to about 90,000 experience per hour in herb lore and around 50,000 in magic. Now although this method isn't very difficult, there's not too much downtime either. I would definitely recommend turning on the inventory viewer plugin and setting some bank fillers in your bank to make this all a lot smoother. All you're going to need is an earth staff equipped and you're good to go. Luckily although this does an entire inventory in one click, the spell animation is quite long so it's not quite as click intensive as like Super Glassmaker or another similar spell like that. 
In the end, you just have to kind of practice the timing, not particularly difficult, and after half an hour, you'll probably have the hang of it. The profits from this can vary quite a bit, but often you can get somewhere between 1 mil and 2 mil an hour, making this one of the most lucrative ways to train a normally expensive skill, but I would say this isn't quite as consistent as some of the other methods. Now one training method that I often forget about, although I wouldn't really say it's underrated, is cooking carambons. This is unlocked at a very low level, in fact you can start cooking them I think at level 30 cooking after the completion of the Tai by 10 trio quest. I really like this method because it offers quite a few different intensity levels. You can cook them on the range like a normal person, and that's a nice AFK way to train, but if you want a higher intensity method you can also try the 3 tick method or even the 1 tick method to vastly increase your experience rates. Now, although you can start cooking these at level 30, you are gonna burn a fair number right away. Now, that's not really a reason not to do it. It's just, just be aware that you're not gonna be profitable until around level 45, at which point you'll just be barely breaking even. But once you get into the 70s or 80s, you're gonna start making a decent amount of money per hour. If you're doing the AFK method like I would do, you'll make around 200k GP per hour while getting about 250,000 cooking experience. Not bad. Now you will continue to burn Karambwans until you get to level 99 and equip a cooking cape, but I would say this is a great training method, so any time after 70 I think would be a great time to start. Now one skill that is often quite expensive, especially in the mid game, is ranged. Due to the fact that using a cannon is incredibly expensive and a blowpipe is very expensive, range training in the mid game usually costs you money. With that said though, there are a few locations out there that have a very profitable spot to cannon monsters. And probably my favorite option are the Scarabites in the Sopenhain dungeon. Now to unlock these, you will need to partially complete the contact quest. And to kill them effectively, you're going to want to have at least 75 range for the blowpipe and a cannon. On top of that, having some higher defense levels would help quite a bit as well, because you do take a fair bit of damage in this dungeon. For gear beyond the blowpipe, you want to bring Kirill's armor if you have a mid-level budget, or Armadil if you can afford it, along with the rest of your best ranged gear. One thing you may actually want to consider bringing though instead of an archer's ring is a ring of wealth because they drop a ton of coins and it can be pretty time consuming to pick them up. Now for your inventory you want to make sure you bring your cannon, a divine ranging potion, and a super defense potion to get kind of a budget bastion potion. You want to bring alk runes, some prayer potions, a herb sack if you have it, and a bunch of food. The final thing worth mentioning is you will need a light source if you have the Kandarin headgear that's ideal. Otherwise, you'll need to bring a tinderbox and a light source because your light will be extinguished fairly often. Now from the dungeon entrance, you just need to go a little bit to the west, making sure you don't run through the traps. At the second spike trap, you're going to want to go over it and down this first ladder. This is an excellent spot to cannon them and you're just going to set your cannon up somewhere in the middle, slap on protect ranged and eagle eye, and start blowpiping. Now, though the majority of them are going to be attacking you with range, there will be some mage scarabites which you're going to want to take out as soon as possible. So your goal is of course to focus the mage scarabites, and then the beige ones that are attacking with melee, and if you have some time of course take out the rangers as well. But reloading your cannon and making sure it has 100% uptime is your priority. These things drop so much loot and you're going to have to be constantly looting and alking. In raw drops alone, they're dropping somewhere between 2 and 2.5 mil per hour, split up between a variety of different items including alkables, noted drops, and of course some things you don't pick up. Now thanks to the quantity of monsters, you're going to be getting about 130k range experience per hour, while profiting somewhere between 800k and a mil per hour, depending on your supply usage. So a really awesome place to train range while also making a decent amount of money per hour as well. Now a training method I've been doing a lot recently is cremating shade remains. Now this method has become a lot more popular recently, but it offers one of the only ways in this game to get profitable prayer training. Pretty much any other way you train prayer, you have to buy bones and bury them or sacrifice them at an altar. Either way, you're losing money. But with this method, you actually do make money while training prayer and fire making at the same time. It's a really interesting method. Now you can start doing this at lower fire making levels, but I believe the only profitable way to actually do this is with Urium remains at level 95 fire making. So it has a pretty steep requirement, but I think it's definitely worth doing once you get that level. 
Now to burn these, I think you need to complete the Shades of Morton quest as well. And on top of that, having the Mauritania Hard or Elite Diaries complete are going to give you more experience in both Fire Making and Prayer. So it is highly recommended to finish those as well to get the maximum value for your investment. Now what I'm doing here is burning Urim Remains on Redwood Pyre Logs. I bought these both from the Grand Exchange and they are pretty expensive. But every time you burn one, you have a pretty high chance of getting a gold key, which will give you a significant amount of loot back. I think on average, each key is worth around 10k, which more than pays for the ingredients. But we'll do a full inventory here, and I'll show you what kind of loot you can expect. So we have a full inventory of keys, and we ran into the Shades of Morton Catacombs, and in the center, there are these chests that have different colors on them. Each key correlates to a different chest, and you can see when you open them up, you get lots of coins, Alcables, we got an amulet of the damned, a rune longsword, I mean it all adds up and that would be a full run. After price checking it we got 201k in loot which means yeah each key was worth around 10k. Now this method will get you about 250,000 experience per hour in fire making while giving you around 60,000 experience per hour in prayer so not bad actually. And the profit currently ranges about from 200k to 500k per hour so just a lot to love about this method. And that's why I'm doing it all the way from 95 to 99. That video will be coming out pretty soon. Now one magic training method that definitely doesn't need an introduction, but something I often forget about is ice bursting monsters in the Catacombs of Akrend. Ice bursting or barraging Necreals or Dust Devils is one of the quickest magic training methods in the game. But for some reason my pea brain doesn't understand that you can just do this off task. For some reason, every single time I kill Necreals is because I got assigned a Slayer task. And yes, it is an amazing Slayer task, but simply just ice bursting or barraging off task is one of the quickest magic training methods and one that's actually break even or even profitable. Now I'm going in here with a combination of magic damage percentage and prayer gear, but in the end it doesn't matter too much. But as long as you can get your hands on an occult and a tormented bracelet, that will definitely be good enough. But a few other items that are extremely helpful here are the Explorer's Ring, which is given from the Lumberge Diary. This will allow you to alk things even if you're on the Ancient Spellbook, which is pretty helpful here. And the Ash Sanctifier is incredibly good because it'll give you some passive prayer experience and it will also reduce your prayer consumption as you get prayer points back every time you sanctify an ash. The rest of the inventory is prayer potions, a few stamina potions, and some darts. So we're going to be doing neck reels because we are 99 slayers so we might as well. We're going to aggro them all with a dart and then we're going to stack them up using, using the same method we do for slayer. We're going to run back and forth between a corner tile until they all stack up on a single tile. From here we're going to start auto casting Ice Barrage and that is it. Killing Necreals in this manner using Ice Barrage can net you over 300k per hour in magic while also netting you a couple hundred k profit per hour as well. You're not going to be making loads of money but you are going to be saving tons of money while training a normally expensive skill. Now if you want to train magic but you want to make a bit more money per hour, a really great option is the Tan Leather spell on the Lunar Spellbook. This spell is incredibly strong, although it does have a few requirements to unlock it. You're going to need to complete Lunar Diplomacy, the Fremenic Hard Diary, and have 78 magic to use this spell, but it is definitely worth unlocking if you want a profitable way to train magic. Now the setup is kind of similar to the Degrime spell. In our inventory, we're going to have our runes, which are astral and nature runes. We have those in a rune pouch. We have two junk items in our inventory, which we're using just as placeholders. And then we have 25 leather. Each time you cast the tan leather spell, you tan five hides, and that's why I have some placeholder items. So all we're going to do is withdraw an inventory, cast the spell five times, quickly bank all items, withdraw more dragon hide, and repeat. Very simple, it's pretty much as click intensive as Alkeen once you get the hang of it, but can net you up to 1.5 mil per hour in profit while giving over 130k per hour in magic. It is definitely consistently the best money making method for the magic skill and while it does have some steep requirements, I would say it's more than worth it. Now quickly before I go here, I just want to thank all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Aliandra, Prophet of the Boosh, Mitch Reinders, The Hybrid, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. Also a giant thank you to YoYoSup89 and NDM0001 for subscribing at the Runite Tier. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.